Welcome to this video on septoplasty. Before we begin, consider the following questions. What does the nasal septum do, and how does it influence both the shape of the nose and the ability to breathe through it? What is the internal nasal valve, and why is it so critical for nasal airflow? How can changes to the septum affect the external nasal framework and tip position? And what are the main reasons a patient might need a septoplasty, and how would we assess them clinically? The nasal septum separates the left and right nasal cavities. Structurally, it comprises a bony portion posteriorly and a cartilaginous portion anteriorly. The quadrangular cartilage articulates with the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, posterior superiorly, and the vomer, posterior inferiorly, while resting inferiorly upon the maxillary crest. The quadrangular cartilage attaches to the facial skeleton at two crucial points, superiorly at the dorsal keystone area and inferiorly at the anterior nasal spine. These attachments are vital for maintaining the structural integrity of the external nasal framework, and disruption of these connections can lead to deformities that affect the shape and stability of the nose. The relationship between the quadrangular cartilage and the external nasal cartilages is particularly important. The quadrangular cartilage articulates with the upper lateral cartilages, the ULCs, forming the QC-ULC complex. It also inserts between the medial crura of the lower lateral cartilages. It's important to note that the quadrangular cartilage consists of hyaline cartilage, like the larynx, sternum and ribs, which has greater tensile strength compared to the elastic cartilage of the upper and lower lateral cartilages, which is more akin to that of the pinna. As a result, deviations or alterations to the quadrangular cartilage can indirectly affect the position and stability of the upper and lower lateral cartilages, particularly influencing the nasal tip position. The QC-ULC complex forms two boundaries of the internal nasal valve, with the head of the inferior turbinate forming the third. The internal nasal valve is a three-dimensional teardrop-shaped area that represents the narrowest part of the nasal airway. Nasal airflow depends upon a patent and unobstructive internal nasal valve. Addressing septal deviations impacting this area can improve nasal breathing. However, modifications to the upper lateral cartilage during rhinoplasty can also alter the dynamics of the valve, thus affecting airflow. Understanding the interconnected roles of the nasal septum and the external nasal framework in both form and function is essential. Changes to one structure often influences the other. Therefore, septoplasty and rhinoplasty exist on the same spectrum of surgical interventions, where adjustments to the nasal framework can impact both the appearance and breathing to varying extents. Septoplasty is typically performed to address nasal obstruction caused by abnormalities in the septal position or shape. These deviations may be congenital, such as a spur or a bowed septum, or acquired following nasal trauma. Additionally, septoplasty may be indicated as part of endoscopic sinus surgery, where septal deviations obstruct access to the surgical field or may compromise healing postoperatively. It can also be performed as part of a cosmetic septorhinoplasty to correct external nasal deviations and improve overall nasal symmetry and function. A thorough assessment begins with a full clinical history, particularly evaluating any inflammatory nasal conditions such as allergic rhinitis or chronic rhinosinusitis. The patient's response to previous treatments, including intranasal corticosteroids and saline douching, and the patient's functional concerns, such as nasal obstruction and cosmetic concerns relating to the nasal deviation. Clinical examination involves assessment of the septal position, particularly in its relationship to the internal nasal valve area, assessment of the external nasal framework, in particular nasal tip position and support. The patient should be observed during normal and forced inspiration, paying particular attention to the upper lateral cartilage area, looking for INV collapse. If this is seen, a modified Cottle's maneuver should be performed, placing a Jobson horn probe to support the upper lateral cartilages. This prevents internal nasal valve collapse and may correspond to improved nasal airflow for the patient. Assessment can be complemented by subjective data, such as the nose questionnaire, to quantify nasal obstruction symptoms, or objective data, such as nasal inspiratory peak flow, to objectively assess nasal airflow. I hope you found this video to be useful. I'd be grateful for your feedback in the comment section below, and let us know what you'd like us to cover next.